Hello and welcome to Gapey's Garden. Today we're going to be taking a look at the cherry tomatoes that we grew this season. I have six of those. I've got two dwarfs and four indeterminate varieties. Um, they're all new varieties that I've never grown before except for one which I grow every year. Now I do have a few other cherry tomatoes but I covered those in last week's video. Those were the micro dwarfs. I have four of those and I had some pretty interesting results on the bricks testing of those. But we're going to do a bricks testing on these two to see which one is the sweetest. Um, so let's take a look. We're going to start with our two dwarf varieties. This one here on the right is the Bendigo Cherry Drop. And both of these are red varieties and I think are the only red cherry tomatoes that I grew this year. Um, but Bendigo Drop is just putting out some new growth, so it might actually be an indeterminate variety because it, it is putting out quite a bit of fruits. It's just a lot smaller than my other indeterminate varieties. Um, but we've got quite a bit of fruit in here, and it is a little bit slower to ripen, but we're going to go ahead and pick a couple of these to do a tasting on and a bricks test. We're going to start with the, the bricks testing first. And if you watched my previous video, I showed how I do this, which I just basically nick, if I can, the skin of the tomato. And we just need two or three drops of the juice on the surface of our refractometer. And I'll put a link to the refractometer in the description of the video, which I got on Amazon. And then put the flap down and we're gonna take a look at the reading. So this one is just above six bricks, which is sweeter than most of our micro dwarfs that we tested last week. So now it's time to taste. It does taste pretty sweet. It has a really nice flavor, a little bit acidic. I really like it. The skin is Slightly thick, maybe a little bit chewy, but not bad at all. Our next variety is called Rosita Brandywine, and this is our shortest tomato that we have in the garden, aside from our micro dwarfs. Uh, but this variety is supposed to have come from the Brandywine tomato, which you're probably familiar with. It's a large beefsteak and very popular. But the taste of the Rosita Brandywine is supposed to be similar to that. I didn't grow any of those to compare the taste, but I do really like the taste of this tomato, so I can't wait to see what the bricks is going to show us, if it's actually the sweetest or not. Um, but this plant itself is probably the worst looking plant in the garden this year. The, the leaves have really had a lot of uh, challenges. They're just very I don't know if it's got some kind of disease, but I've cut a lot of the foliage off of this plant, so there isn't really that much left. Uh, but we're going to go ahead and pick a few of these to give a try. And I'll definitely be saving some seeds of these because they're very early, very tasty, and don't take up much space at all. All right, this is the one I'm thinking may be my sweetest, but we'll see. And if you get any seeds on when you, ooh, we got a lot of seeds out of there. Um, just kind of brush them off because we don't want any seeds in our test thing. Got another seed there. Okay. Well, this one isn't too much higher than the last one. We're, we're just about the same, slightly above six bricks. So let's try it out. It does have similar taste as the last one. And I think the seeds seem more crunchy. The, the seeds seem kind of larger. I don't know, it's kind of weird. The skin is pretty thin. It's actually very, very similar to the last tomato. This one here is my only pear variety that I grew this year. It's called Indigo Pear Drop, and I've grown a variety called Indigo Cherry Drop, so I'm not sure if they're related or not. Uh, but this one is a yellow, kind of yellow-orange variety that has some antho coloring on it. It's not all that productive, 
compared to my other cherry tomatoes, but we've got a few of those ripening. And this one did have a little bit of problems with splitting. Um, you can see this one here has a crack in it, um, but this one does as well. We have been getting a little bit of rain, so that is probably what happened here. Uh, but this plant is probably the third shortest of the cherry tomatoes. I think it is an indeterminate, so I don't think it's a dwarf, but it is a, a pretty small one compared to my other indeterminate varieties. Um, so let's take a look and see how these test and taste. This one is not as juicy as the last two we did. Having a little trouble getting any juice out of there. There we go. It's coming. One, probably just do two drops of this one. Not a juicy tomato at all. Well, this one is actually coming out sweeter than the last two. So we're at a five, six, seven, just under eight bricks, which is kind of surprising. It doesn't really taste that much sweeter to me. Maybe a little bit more acidic. The skin is a lot more crunchy. And it's definitely not as juicy as the last two. It's still pretty good flavor. But I think I prefer the flavor of the two red ones that we tried. Now by far the largest, most productive um, tomato in the garden this year is the egg yolk. And this one gets, um, well as you can see, the the fruits look kind of egg yolk colored, but we have got a ton of tomatoes on this plant and it was one of the first, well, maybe the third one to ripen in the garden. And it has been a challenge trying to keep this thing from getting out of control. And I haven't been very successful in keeping it in control because it is getting all over the place. I'm constantly pruning it back and we've got lots of fruits here that have yet to ripen. Uh, but one problem I've had with this one is a lot of splitting. So this one probably has been splitting the most out of all of my cherry tomatoes. You could see several of them here have split. And it is a little bit larger than some of the other cherry tomatoes as well. Um, so I'm going to feed these ones to the chickens. And Kimberly is always the first one to get any kind of treat because she is a pig. So there we go. Let's pick some better ones for us to give a taste here. So this one looks like a good one. So I'm picking two of each just in case I want to do any retests on any of the tomatoes with the bricks testing. Our egg yolk tomato, at least one of the two that we picked, has already split which is not too surprising because this one is very prone to splitting. I don't think I'll grow it again because of that. Um, I just, I like to store tomatoes for a longer period and if they split, they do not store well. All right, let's see what this one says. Oh, this one is a little higher than the other ones. This one is at a, right at nine bricks. So the sweetest one so far. It does taste slightly sweeter than the red ones. And the skin is a lot thinner, which is probably why it's prone to splitting. One thing I might try is, no, actually the other one that we harvested is also split. So they weren't split when I harvested them, but now they both are. But one thing I might try is maybe harvesting them earlier before they're fully ripe and maybe they will split less. The prettiest tomato is probably this perfection in pink. It gets some really beautiful tresses of antho or purple colored tomatoes with some red. It was also the very last one to ripen. So um, I haven't actually picked one of these to taste yet, so I'm not sure how the flavor of these is going to be. Uh, it is a very large plant and is producing quite a few tomatoes here, and it's getting pretty out of control. Um, not quite as bad as the egg yolk, but you can see it's getting really tall, and I'm going to have to 
start pruning this one back as well. So let's find some good ones to harvest here. I haven't noticed any splitting, um, but these just recently started ripening up. So we're gonna take these two. So this one, it actually looks a lot like a cherry, like a, you know, a, a sweet cherry, but it's probably the prettiest tomato that I've grown this year. Let's see how this one does. Oh, lots of seeds came out of there. It's hard to get any juice out without getting seeds. Okay. So this one is just above eight. Let's see how it tastes. The skin is a little bit chewier. It has a different kind of, it actually does taste a little bit like cherries. So it has a fruitier taste to it than the other ones that we've tasted, which I, I kind of like. So a really tasty one. Our last cherry tomato isn't called Berry's Crazy Cherry for nothing. This thing is super productive. It's, it's a multi-flora variety, which means that it gets really big clusters of fruits all over the plant. And this is the one that I grow every single year because I just love um, the taste. I love the productivity. It's very early. I think this was the second one to ripen in the garden this year and it just produces tons and tons of fruit. It does tend to drop fruit if you wait too long to harvest. I could see there is one there on the ground that I need to pick up. Um, this one is a little bit prone to cracking, but it usually seems to crack after you harvest it for some reason. It doesn't crack too often on the plant, but once you pick it, it seems to crack um, fairly quickly. But we are going to go ahead and take a couple of these to taste. Take that one and we'll take this one back here. There we go. We'll see how this one compares. I've been growing it every year for probably at least five or six years. I have a lot of cherry tomatoes I want to try next season though, so I don't know if it's going to make the cut. We'll see how the, how the bricks looks on this one. Well, surprisingly low. So this one is about a six and a half bricks, which isn't really very sweet. It does taste a little bit more watered down, like it had a lot of rain. I think I'm gonna test one more, the other one, just to see if, if it also is the same. But it's not as impressive flavored as I, I remember it being. Let's try one more time, just to make sure seeds out of there. Oof, so many seeds. All right, I think that's good enough. Let's see. Yep, we got six and a half. So really kind of disappointing. So it kind of makes me consider not growing it again next year. But normally this is my favorite cherry tomato. Well, We'll see, it might not be in my garden next year. I hope you enjoyed this cherry tomato tasting. If you have a cherry tomato that you think I should give a try, let me know. Maybe I will give it a try next year, but my list of what I wanna grow next year is getting longer and longer. Thanks for watching and we'll talk to you again soon. If you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe. You can also find me on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook.